Hello dear students, welcome to this week's art lesson. I hope you all are doing great. Alright, as you see, today we are going to talk about Romanticism. This is an art movement back from 18th century, late of the 18th century. Romantic movement started at the end of 1700s and reached its peak in the early 1800s. It marked the end of the Baroque movement and it was followed by realism. So romanticism means an idealized view of reality. An idealized view of reality. Romanticism was a cultural movement that started in Europe. It was somewhat of a reaction to the Industrial Revolution, which occurred during the same time period. The movement affected philosophical thinking, literature, music and art. But of course, today we are going to talk about art. It focused on emotions, feelings and moods of all kinds, including spirituality, imagination, mystery and fervor. The subject matter varied widely, including landscapes, religion, revolution and peaceful beauty. The brushwork for romantic art become looser and less precise. The great romantic artist Caspar David Friedrich summed up romanticism saying, the artist's feeling is his law. This is one of his paintings, the most famous one actually. Perhaps no painting represents the romanticism movement better than Friedrich's this painting. In this picture, a man stands at the peak of a rocky cliff, his back to the weaver as he looks out over the clouds and the world. The weaver experiences the awe of nature and at the same time feels the insignificance of man. The painting does an excellent job of conveying the emotion of a moment and the drama of nature. This next painting is from Francisco Goya. It's called The Third of May, 1808. It shows a different side of the romantic artist, the side of revolution. In this painting, Francisco Goya is commemorating the Spanish resistance to France and the armies of Napoleon. This painting has movement, drama and emotion typical of the Romantic era. It is also one of the first paintings used to protest the horrors of war. Here there is our next painting from Thomas Cole. It's called The Titan's Goblet. In this painting you can see the sense of the fantastic the titans were from Greek mythology. They were giants who ruled before the Greek gods like Zeus. The huge size of the goblet gives you an idea as to how enormous the titans must have been. Details in the painting such as the boats sailing inside the goblet and the buildings on the rim of the goblet add to the feeling of magnificence. If you guys enjoyed these paintings, I'm here including the name of some romantic artists. You can go ahead and research about them and look at his, their other paintings. You can find their paintings interesting if you enjoyed these ones. Okay, let's talk about monochromatic color scheme a little bit. As you remember from last week, a more monochromatic color scheme is uh, different um, shades of one single color. So if you look at this one in this painting, you can see that this one is created by using a monochromatic color scheme. You can see different shades of one single color 
lighter and darker values of one single color. Here, the area in the front, the big rocks near us, they look quite darker than anywhere else on the painting. And when you go on the middle ground, you can see the same color used with lighter shades. You can see a darker shade on the left and the lighter shade on the right. And uh, when you go and look far away on the painting near to the horizon line, you will see the lightest shades of the same exact color, even in the sky, the very light shade of the very dark color in the front. So we can say this painting is made by use a monochromatic color scheme. All right, since we remember the monochromatic color scheme, let's go ahead and practice a little bit. This is good for you to remember your perspective knowledge and also your uh, shading skills. For this, we're going to need, of course, some paper and we're going to need pencils. I highly recommend you to use 2B, but today I use 2B and 5B together. But if you have 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, they are also fine. I don't suggest you to uh, use uh, harder pencils such as HB or 2H. Okay. So today I'm going to use my paper, not horizontal, but vertical. And I'm going to start with the horizon line. I'm going to draw a landscape. We're going to have mountains, but we're going to shade these mountains and show that some of are close to us, but some of them are far away. I started with my uh, nearest mountain and I'm going to draw more and more mountains and I'm going to make them look like they're going too far away. As you remember, the things appear to the nearest are the biggest. So you can make your mountains smaller uh, detail wise when they go far away. I want you to have at least five layers of mountains but I'm going to draw six and you can just fix the areas wherever you're not happy just try to make them look like behind each other. Okay the nearest one will be the darkest and the one far away will be the lightest. This technique of shading called aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective. This is a illusion of creating depth and dimension in your drawings. So you can create the illusion of perspective making the objects less detailed and lighter which are far away and the ones on the near you can make them darker and more detailed to give the illusion of depth and three dimension okay here we go as you see i started with my lightest shade on the mountains which are far away and here on my second mountain, second layer, let's see, is slightly darker than my first one. And here I go with the third layer of mountains. I started to press my, uh, press my pencil harder and try to make it slightly darker than the one before. And like this, since we go more and more layers, try to make them darker and darker so the ones appears to near to us, 
they supposed to be the darkest. Here I'm fast forwarding, forwarding a little bit because it takes a little bit of time but you guys have time, take your time, take it easy and try to practice your drawing and shading skills and once uh, you are having trouble with coloring your pencil to be you can go ahead and switch to a softer and darker pencil such as I uh, the one I'm using 5b so with these kind of drawing pencils uh, the numbers appearing next to B letter when they go higher the color of the pencil is darker and softer so here you can see the difference between 2B and 5B ok let's fast forward let's finish this drawing ok guys here we go my drawing is finished I tried to create the illusion of depth and perspective with using different shades of one single color. Next week we are going to practice this with watercolor. But now, since you have all the time at home, I want you to practice this with a piece of paper and pencil. But here you don't have to draw a landscape like I did. You can draw a cityscape or you can just practice this monochromatic color scheme with a different drawing. It's your artwork. It's your imagination. Let yourself to create something unique and unusual. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.